Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? RealFansRealTalk.com Where Arthur Diamond's trip young and intern Tom For the white and black fans Asia to Manhattan I'll get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan uh -huh, And if uh -huh. your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand Sports, <laughs> gossip, all the hot topics hey, hey. RealFansRealTalk.com Got it, uh -huh. they got the hottest bloggers Did Jeremy Lin hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first I'm talking about the latest, yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest yeah, yeah. Go check out the art even tell a neighbor, tell him Bobby sent ya From spring to winter, tune in should be the only thing on your agenda Certified co-sign, you know what I'm about son Real fans, real talk dot com, I'm out one Real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk dot com Real fans, real talk dot com Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk dot com Real fans, real talk dot com Great to be back live in Brooklyn And uh, I have my co-host as always The one and only Trip Young How's it going Trip? First of all, you know It's one of those days of Cinco de Mayo right now I feel like I got the pregame hat because I might have been pregame and I might not have been pregaming. But, you know, we're we going to have a lot of fun today. We got a, a couple of guests coming on. We got the chef is in the building right now. Not not Raekwon, the chef. The chef Cubano. He got the best cheesecake in town. He got the best snacks in town. So you might want to, you know, get on the bandwagon right now. But he's going to be with us in a, in a little, little while. But more importantly than that... We had the Cavs going all sorts of crazy last night, breaking the record for three-point shots in a, in, a, in a quarter and a half and in the game against the Hawks last night. So you know I'm in a good mood right now. It's, it's, it's going to be crazy today, and we're going to get through it. I mean, I mean, listen, every, at this point, everything got to go up. The ceiling almost fell down. A lot, lot of crazy things going on in the studio. People <laughs> yeah. walking in front of the camera on a live show. Yeah. Ceiling's falling <laughs> apart. It feels like it's, it's Friday the 13th more than it's, I my, you know, Cinco de Mayo. I wore my sombrero but today, that probably wouldn't happen. None of this would have happened if I had my sombrero on. I had the lucky Next sombrero year. on last year exactly. on Cinco de Mayo. That's what it is. <laughs> so, I didn't bring it this year. Yeah. And that, that scene, that's obviously the problem. But a second round of both the NBA and the NHL playoffs in full effect. A lot, of, lot to talk about. We got Brooklyn pizza eating contest going on. We're going to get into details with that a little bit later on mm -hmm. on the program. Lots looking to talk to about. <laughs> Look, looking forward to that as well. Uh, I, I don't think I'm going to compete in it. You know, I'm a trainer they, for boxing, trainer yeah, for football. Yeah, that might throw the, the wrench in the game, you know, right? There's a specialized <laughs> training for those eating contests. We'll get into that a little bit later on. But uh, you talked about the shellacking that the Cavs gave the Hawks, and that mm -hmm. caused a little bit of a drama even on the post-game show. Charles Barkley said on the post game show that, you know, if he's the Hawks, he would recommend that, you know, if they're beating him that bad, that you take somebody out. And then Kenny Smith and Shaq were quick to jump on him and saying, oh, no, don't do that, you know, because they know how some people, the way social media is nowadays and the media in general, uh, throwing somebody on the bus for that. He didn't really mean take them out, like injure them, but, you know, yeah. he just meant like the old school style of basketball, Bill Lambeer. You know, type of you know, if they're coming well, into the paint like that, you they, just, weren't, they you, weren't coming you just, to the paint though. They were shooting. They, I mean, so. they, they were doing everything. Yeah. So unless you want to have a million free throw shots, you foul somebody on on, on the three. But uh, I mean, they were just on fire last night, and it was so crazy because all before the game, all the talk was about uh, LeBron's three pointer, how his percentage went down, and when he lands on one foot, he was at twenty percent. When he lands on two feet, it was at like thirty five, and then every Everybody on Cleveland decided they was going to get into the act and start knocking down threes. J.R. Smith started it off. Uh, then, you know, LeBron got into it. Kyrie, Kevin Love, Dante Jones, who they literally just picked up, I think, like, 20, 20, 20 uh, one days ago. He got into the mix, and he actually hit the three that broke the record. Mo Williams actually got some some burn in this game. He hit a three. Uh, Channing Fry, you know, with everybody was was hitting threes, and it was a, it was a great thing to see them in the first half break that record you know the, the record for a quarter 10 and a quarter then 18 at the half and then in the fourth quarter you know they came through and just you know broke it and it went up to 25 which is a record 
I thought and maybe everybody else, if it was going to get broken, we would think it would be broken by Golden State. Uh, but it was actually broken by Cleveland, so the shooters are on deck. And if they can keep that up, you know, they, they are looking pretty good right now, just putting a beating on the Hawks. They swept through the first round. They're up 2-0 right now in the series going to uh, Atlanta for the next game. But um, do you think that Atlanta can, can at least get a game? Because they're 0-9 oh, oh right now against the Cavs in the playoffs. If they're going to get anything, it's going to be game three. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see them pushing the series more than past five games. And, you know, Cleveland just has their number. The rosters haven't changed that much by either side since last year. They swept them last year. Yeah. Chances are, I would say they got about a 70% chance of sweeping them. And if anything's going to happen, it's going to be game three because we saw what happened with, you know, the Spurs smacking OKC, and then you get kind of, as a professional athlete, your pride is a little bit hurt in there, and you got to come out and do something. So it's going to be their home court. Game three, maybe they'll take it to avoid the sleep, the sweep. It's not going uh, past five games, though, regardless. I, I, I don't think they'll take two in Atlanta. They might take one, but even that, I, I think it's unlikely. You know, it's, it's about matchups in every sport. Them. You know, they... the Hawks are a good team. They don't have a superstar. But yeah. they play well. They, you know, they move the ball. They have some pretty good players, just not a superstar caliber athlete. They're like uh, a, a poor man's version of the the Pistons with uh, Ben Wallace and those guys. Where it wasn't, yeah. you know, there wasn't one main guy. Where everybody, all five in the, in the starting five, was were, were really good. But they just not there. You could kind of figure level. it like the Denver Nuggets after Carmelo Anthony left. Like they yeah. have some good players out there that are, they know how to play. You know, play together. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's it's not enough when it comes to winning a championship yeah you know, they're, they're just not, not going to get the job when off. you got these and guys breaking Jeff records Teague, on the in in game of uh, in game one i believe he he went and knocked down a three in the first half and he said he said to lebron james not this year not this year and it's like number one after you hit the three <laughs> you were still down by five or six yeah. and it's only the first half what do you say it's not like a, exactly. a game clinching like nail in the coffin fourth quarter three-pointer yeah this is game one the first half and they didn't even win that game and you were down by five yeah it's not like you even took the lead yeah, in the first it's, half it's kind of crazy and that's the one thing like you know if you're going to call somebody out, you better be accomplished yourself. You know, like if that if that was Kobe or, or Wade or, you know, one of those guys you calling them out. with the Pistons series, too. Yeah. Like, Johnson. you got to you gotta have accomplished something to be trying to call out LeBron and, and step to LeBron like that. And then you see what happens. He comes back, and not only does he just bomb you from threes, everybody on the Cleveland roster, uh, except for Tristan Thompson, he might have been the only one that didn't hit a three yesterday. When are people going to get that talking trash to superstars does not work in your favor? It didn't work with Jordan. It didn't work with reggie miller yeah and, and the knicks with spike lee it just doesn't work it does not help you out just no. don't do it like but they're just not gonna learn but Listen, that series I'm, not I'm we, we didn't really expect that <laughs> one to be too interesting uh getting over to the the spurs mm. thunder i thought i even put on the real fans real talk fan page make sure you check that out facebook.com forward slash real fans real talk i also put over there uh, so much for an interesting series because the spurs just yeah. blew them out the water and obviously i spoke a little bit too soon because the thunder comes back in a nail biter with yeah. a controversial finish uh at the end and we had a fan mail question uh darren from austin writes how should the league handle situations like missed calls at the end of the spurs okc uh game two playoff matchup now it's rough because it, it'd be talking about something that's really fast paced. But in this instance, where you literally have the ref staring right at the play, I mean, the ref is like this, following him. You can see his head movements. He's following every move that is going on right now. And it's like he just completely blows that call. And then you have your, your game is over. And it's like, I mean, what can you really do? Fortunately for the Spurs, this wasn't a game seven situation that we're talking about. And it was resulting in him going home. But it's kind of it's kind of rough because, I mean, I guess what are you going to say? Maybe in the last two minutes they could have some kind of a committee to review these kind of, kind of things. But... I mean, that could get kind of crazy in itself because, I mean, you really, like, we could be talking about, as it is, two minutes now in basketball could lead six to seven minutes. So even you're talking more than about, that, exactly, even all more. The, all the timeouts, so, you know, lead yeah. to commercial breaks. So you could really be extending the, the game, yeah. So, I mean, two minutes is the most exciting part of basketball when it's a closed game. Yeah. So you kind of, 
you know, the, the adrenaline and intensity kinds of builds up, especially when you're talking about playoff basketball. But to answer Darren's question, people put the suggestion out there of, of the challenge flag like with football. But yeah. before I even get into that, for those of you that didn't see the play, Manu Ginobili was pushed as he was um, trying to guard the inbounder. And even the announcers didn't know what to do in that yeah. situation because, you know... Th- it, or, or, or eventually they figured out that the ruling is a technical foul, but it was yeah. inbounded, and then the ball was stolen anyway. So in this particular case, the Spurs, they got yeah, the ball they, anyway. They, they still had, they a, had chance. a chance to win. I don't know why, you know, maybe they had in their mind that they needed to hit a three-pointer yeah. because if the ball was inbounded and it wasn't stolen and they scored, you know, two free throws, they need a three. So maybe they were preparing for a three-pointer in their mind because I don't know why it was backed up to three. I mean, they were inside. They brought it out for the wide-open three. Yeah. I mean, a two-pointer would have gotten the job done. And they had a timeout. So if you're talking about the clock should have stopped and they could have had a set play, yeah. as soon as they got the steal, if they didn't have the open two-point shot, they could have called a timeout regroup with Popovich yeah. and, and figured everything out. But I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's rough. Even, even, you know, in football, though, getting back to the challenge suggestion, you know, referee fouls and, you know, like pass interference in football, that's not a reviewable play. Yeah. So are they going to make fouls a reviewable play? Like they, they don't do that with football. Yeah. I doubt that they're going to do that with basketball. And, and but, I think it, it, it's – these are isolated things. Like, like, I mean, this is something that we actually, I mean, I don't think anybody's really seen something like this happen before. So to actually make a, a, some kind of a change for something that really doesn't happen that much. I mean, cause, I mean, for the most part, yeah, refs get calls wrong. But for the most part, if you think about every possession on every play, it's, it's a lot more that they get right than they get wrong. So, I mean, it's just a situation where, you know, you don't want to be be the, the the victim of a bad call or a, or a missed call. Then you put your team up to a point where even if you get a, a bad call, it's not gonna affect you. And in this game, they were playing from behind, and I actually and I thought they were gonna actually come back and win this game from the point where Westbrook took one of those erratic threes. He tried to shoot over Tim Duncan and he missed it, and and from there. You know, it just started going downhill. The Spurs had caught up, but it was, you know, too little too late. So if you want to avoid that happening to your team, then don't put yourself in that position, you know, moving forward. You know what it is. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, this is a very fast-paced game, and the refs aren't perfect. You know, and even though he's looking right at the, at the play right there, you know, I mean, it's a situation where he just didn't know. What to do? What to do right there? So just don't put your team in that situation. You know, moving forward. Shout out to uh, to, to to the fan that wrote in with that question. But like I said, it's kind of it's kind of rough to just say, well, we're gonna you know make some rule changes. I, I and, think and you know the and... challenge flag thing isn't a bad idea. You do it the same way as football, but not reviewing every out of bounds play and everything. But having, would you who would you challenge? Because it of... wasn't a call. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, we... I mean, even even w- with with things like that, even with the calls, like you know, so the so that way those things aren't bad but you have a limited amount of challenges yeah. you know per game or per half and kind of the same thing as with basketball if you get you know them right then you get another one and then and you get charged a timeout and timeouts are very valuable in basketball as well there so. would also have to be some kind of play stoppage too because like in a situation yeah, well, like well, that where I mean, there's no call if somebody inbounds. well you, that's why you'd be charged a timeout you throw yeah. the challenge flag after let's say the opposing team scores and then you throw the challenge flag and then you know, yeah. if something went wrong, that basket will get taken away or something. That'd be I mean, funny seeing Popovich pull out a flag. Yeah, <laughs> it would be. I mean, the, I'm just testing, you know, how that theory would work, yeah. I guess. But one saying, rule saying change the that they should do out. is like the hack a, dr- a Drummond, hack a Howard yeah. type of thing. I think that if the foul is away from the ball, then it should be one free throw and you get the ball back. And yeah. that will stop that right away because the fouls will add up. You know, Drummond will probably miss the free throw most anyway, likely. Yeah, he's, he's that but, most likely. <laughs> but it's not a two free throws and, you know, it will get rid of that strategy. So I think one free throw and the ball back will, will stop that nonsense. Because it's one thing, you know, with Shaq, you know, during his playing days, he would get the ball and you would foul him or yeah. something like that. But when it's away from the ball and you're doing, 
and you're doing all that, then that's all. At least the good thing about Shaq is he actually did hit some of the, a lot of those free throws. Well, his percentage <laughs> is a little bit higher, but yeah. not much. Andre Drummond is just horrible from the foul line. I mean, he was his is like the worst in, in NBA history. His his uh, free throw percentage, so that that really sucks. But um, you know, it is what it is. We definitely got a, a lot of playoff action going on. Uh, the, the 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 Heat and uh, Toronto. Kyle Lowry having you know one of his worst historic. He is the the worst mm -hmm. uh, field goal percentage with a minimum of 100 shots in playoff history. He's not his any player in yeah. history of the playoffs worst field goal percentage. And obviously, when it's a key member of your team, that's yeah. you know hard. He did hit a half court three pointer to take it overtime, yeah. but they ended up losing in overtime because so uh, Dwayne do Wade. Good. That that boy, Dwayne Wade looked like I don't know. He must have got to uh, Michael Jordan's secret stuff, and his knees is feeling better because he's shooting threes. He's blocking shots, you know, left and right. Like Dwayne Wade has been all over, and uh, Goran Dragic has really stepped up in in this series. You know, he's playing some great basketball. Sean Whiteside is playing great basketball. I really wish that Chris Bosh was healthy and able to to be on the court because you know I think that this. Playoffs would be that, even that's a better. whole separate story in itself. Chris mm -hmm. Bosch wanted to play. The he had his own doctor sign off that he was good to play. The team doctors of the Heat aren't allowing it, and no. uh, out, everyone out there is trying to say that there's some finagling going on because if he's out of uh, commission for a while, then his, you know the insurance company covers his salary. The team won't have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. But if he comes back now, that mm -hmm. resets like the ten month clock that they have. The 10-month clock is too late for free agency. So those people, it, it won't free the cap space nah. until he's out for 10 months. So the free agency for Durant and everything, the people are out there uh, you know, using those theories on ESPN and other networks, that's not how it works. He's got to be gone for at least 10 nah. months before but you know it what? frees up the cap space. I, like, I, like if, if you're Miami, I mean, really just to save a couple of dollars, it doesn't yeah. even make sense because you want to have your best chance to win. And the people best chance think to that win. it's for free agency purposes. Yeah. Like, it, they'll, they'll free up the cap space and then they could go after Kevin Durant and free agency or maybe have a chance to bring LeBron back or yeah. you know whatever the case may be and then maybe pay luxury taxes when Bosch is healthy and comes back. Yeah, comes back. But, but definitely, listen, Dwayne Wade is not getting any younger, so you want to win now if you have yeah, a chance. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, the whole whole rust thing like Bosch is coming back he just he wasn't even allowed to fly on a, a plane now he's he's just coming back and they're saying he's good to play but how effective can he be how many minutes can he do and you know this is you know life-threatening stuff it's not you know uh well this I mean I'm, I'm all for the team if, if he can't play sitting them out you know, but if he can, I mean, his doctor said he could play. He wants to play. Make him sign a waiver. You well, he know, said he, he was okay with signing a waiver. Yeah, so it, so it's, that's where you know the waiver wasn't an issue. He his wife went and he made the thing on social media. Mm -hmm. I think you know they all rescinded it now. There was a statement prepared for Bosch saying that you know myself and the the team or whatever generic statement they came out will come to a conclusion and do what's best. You know, so they kind of took that out of the media because maybe Pat Riley sat down with him and said, listen, you know, this is a big distraction. We're yeah. in the playoffs. We don't want you to play, you know, for whatever it is. And, yeah. you know, they just put an end to it. So, uh, but, it, you know, I, I think the the Toronto-Miami series will still be interesting with or without Bosch. Uh, I think the, the he could get the job done there. It could go either way, though. Cal Lowry was practicing after the game to kind of you know make sure he got those extra reps in for the next game so uh, we'll see what happens going forward Toronto's a very talented team and they could still pull uh pull the series out but yeah. the, the last series we got to talk about in the NBA is of course the Golden State Warriors the record-breaking Golden State Warriors getting it done without Steph Curry and the question is should Steph Curry come back now or wait until uh, possibly playing against the Spurs. Now, Game Three in Portland. I mean, uh, <laughs> one of those nine losses was in Portland. Yeah, but I, I mean, the way it's looking right now, they like you know, they're completely just dominating this team. 
you know, they, they like Golden State is really deep, and Portland is a team that really just overachieved this season. You know, everything was playing, you know, just, just outplaying themselves. Because I mean, like I said, we we spoke about this before. Like losing four starters, you lose Lopez, Aldridge, uh, Wesley Matthews Jr. and Batum, and they find themselves still in the playoffs, still in the thick of things. You know, they got. They got fortunate. I mean, the Clippers lose, you know, Chris Paul and, and Blake Griffin in the first round. But now you're dealing with a Golden State Warriors team who, you know, even without Steph Curry on the floor, they're still probably a, 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 at least a number five seed, you know, in, in the Western Conference because, you know, they're so deep. Draymond Green, you know, uh, Klay Thompson, one of the best shooters in the league outside of his partner Steph Curry. And they just play, you know, really well together. And they're showing there that, you know, that – the NBA champions, and they're showing that right now. So it's gonna be it's gonna be rough. So I would say, you know, keep Steph Curry out as long as you can. I don't I don't know if at this point, you know, if if Portland can win more than a game if they win a game, because I mean the way they're being demoralized by Golden State right now, it's just not a good look for them. So keep Steph Curry out. The only concern is, you know. If you keep him out too long and then he comes back and you got to play OKC or San Antonio, those are not two teams that you want to shake the rust off of. Yeah, exactly. So I was thinking, as long as he's 100% because you don't want to risk re-injuring him, yeah. you, you put him in, you limit his minutes, maybe 20 minutes out of the game or something to get the rust out. I mean, he wasn't out that long, so there's not mm-hmm. too much of a rust issue there. But if he's not 100%, then, then definitely, uh, obviously, sit him, even if he's... At 90, I think you wait until the Spurs series. There's yeah. no, no reason to rush back into it. Oh, okay. But, See, we can't just, you know, we don't know how them games are going to end now. That is true. That is so true. we got to we gotta wait, take wait back and home see. Home court advantage. So, uh, but we do have some guests on the show. We got some videos uh, with the interviews that we had at the Family on Three event, Trip Young with Anthony Mason Jr. That is the son of the Knicks great Anthony Mason. We're going to play that momentarily. But I mentioned at the top of the program, uh, we do have Brooklyn's annual pizza eating contest coming up. Uh, for those of you out there who uh, you know are interested in competing, uh, it's Rocco's Pizzeria. They are also the official caterer of Real Fans Real Talk. And uh, mm-hmm. for information on how to enter, <laughs> you could uh, you could call them up, go to Rocco's Pizza on Fifth, or give them a call seven one eight two three eight seven six five eight. Uh, the numbers there on the screen. We will uh, the be way, in the building. I don't know if we're going to be competing just yet, but <laughs> it is June fifth is the uh, actual contest. But in order to be a participant in the contest, you have to qualify. Uh, so between now and then, uh, you have to eat a whole pie within twelve minutes. And if you do that, then you're entered into the contest. If you don't get it done, you just basically have to pay for the pizza. And if you are entered into the contest. First place is $750, second place is $500, third place is $250, so there is some cash up for grabs uh, for those entering uh, this year's Brooklyn Pizza Eating Contest. And of course, and make you know, sure you have some tums on hand for all the acid indigestion that you're well, probably you probably know, gonna the, get after eat that Competitive pie. eating and stuff, they eat like <laughs> lettuce and stuff to go and grow the stomach and stuff. I mean, I think the record last year was 30 slices. And, you know, but they, you also, uh, you can hit them up on Facebook. For those of you watching us on YouTube or live on the internet, they do deliver to anywhere in the country, especially if you're a Brooklynite and you're a little homesick. They overnight it, you know, and then you can heat it up uh, that, that way if you're homesick from Brooklyn pizza and you have to eat <laughs> pizza elsewhere in the country, uh, you can hit them up for that and hit them up on Facebook. Click that like button and uh, stay tuned with the Brooklyn pizza eating contest. But, as I mentioned, the video from the um, from the charity event family on three, Anthony Mason Jr. was there. Uh, Trip Young chopped it up with him. And when we come back, uh, Cheesecake Chef, Chef Cubano, will be joining us. He is also uh, there at all of the Bowling for Peace events. Uh, he will be there for the Bowling for Peace bowling event, which was moved to this Monday. May 9th, uh, that's at uh, 7 p.m. at Bullmore Whit Lanes and Chelsea Piers. We'll have more information for you when we come back. But check out the video with Tripp Young and Anthony Mason Jr. at the Family on 3 event. That's right. Okay. Comes on now. We got, oh. Okay. Grab uh, Grab the cheesecakes. 
Crenshaw High School right now for the family on three, Sammy and Vince, making their way to Junior. You see we done had the Knicks out here. We done had John Stark, the Knicks legend out here. All right, we got the, 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 the people from Ford over here getting test driving, and they donating money to the to the charity. We got Body Armor over here, you know, but uh, Anthony, what is what, what what's what's the what's the motivation to keep you pushing these kids and, and, and getting our youth where they need to be? Just knowing that you know I was where they was at, you know what I'm saying? In those public schools, in those environments where it's so much negativity. So anything that I can do positive for my community in that aspect of showing them something that they can get exposed to, that's gonna lead them to some greater things in life, I'm a part of. And I know it starts right in our inner cities with our community. It's definitely to give back to what you what you a part of, what you've been. You gotta realize, like right now in these days and age, it's like a communication break between the adults and the kids. And I feel like there's so many other things teaching us from social media, computers, and all that. We gotta take advantage of the interactivity with these kids and be more hands-on. Cause they willing, they just wait for us to speak to them. And then what you're doing out here, you bring a, a Knicks legend like John Starks. You had uh, M. Easy from Power 105. So, you know, you're showing them something, you know, that they can actually relate to, people that they see on TV or that they've watched and are still watching on TV. So it, it just really gives them, a, a, you know, continued motivation to want to strive to, to do better. Um, so now I know you got a lot, of, a lot of kids out here. Now all of these kids play basketball, but... Is that all they do, or does anybody out here have any any other talents besides playing basketball? Yeah, definitely, and I touch on that a lot because during my basketball career, what I ventured in was film and production. I love to curate, so now I'm creative, directing, and editing, and doing film. So it's always an aspect that it's more to do with athletes and the sport that they're in. They always have aspirations to do other things or have talent in other things. Basketball is just a body and a physical and a mental, sports in general. Physically, mentally, you're there. So you definitely don't, I, I wouldn't think that anybody's body or mental is just in a perspective that, oh, this only going to be the sports. No, you can, everybody has other talents for sure. But this basketball and the sports thing is a tool to open up so many doors so you can do those other talents that you can. So I got a couple kids, you know, we talk about that a lot. That, they want to venture out and own their own car shops and they got engineering dreams and then like my, my young boy right here he and my young boy right here he wants to rap you know what i'm saying and he was telling me like i gotta keep it on hold but i was like yo bro you gotta be you end of the day you be you if that's you you can still do your basketball thing and still practice that's on the side but you want to keep that going so you don't never lose it don't never lose sight of that so i i was telling him i want to bring him in you that's cool all right let me let me where, where, where is he at? We're going we're gonna to bring him on to the set, and we're going to see. We're going to give him his opportunity right here on Real Fans, Real Talk. Come on, come on, come on with it. You know we support our youth on Real Fans, Real Talk. So we're going to see. If he got bars, we're going to see. We're going to let him know. If he don't, if he don't got bars, we're going to cut this, and we ain't going to make the show. I'm letting y'all know right now. All right, but hold on. First of all, introduce yourself. Hey, it's your boy, Todd. You already know. I'm me on Instagram, Facebook, Todd Breezy. There you go. Come on, man. He out here. He, he's trying to get his, his Instagram up. Don't don't be down in the DM, all right? But we're gonna let him, we're gonna let him rock on, you know. And like I said, let's see what you got because we do we do support our youth. And you know, let's go. Right. No cursing, we on TV, we don't wanna get kicked off the air. Alright. So I'm gonna let you have the book. Let's get it. Hey. This earth is cold and it seems unearthly. Generations moving in cycles, ungodly. People think they're right because they're spiritual life. Young kids going to jail for the wrong rights. Duplication moved the nation because they was related. Listen to the reason why they was all related. Because their favorite rappers was bad and they couldn't face it. And every day they did bad, they jotted. That was the basics. Rumors all around me, I know it, I can't case don't it. Don't go nowhere, we don't go nowhere, don't go nowhere. Now, I, I said I said if we had balls, we was going to keep it. So we definitely going to keep it. We're going we gonna to put this on on uh, on this Thursday's coming show. Y'all going to see this this little this little clip right here. Now I said I wasn't gonna do this no more after the Panthers lost the Super Bowl, but since he had them balls, I'm gonna give y'all a, a quick dab on that real quick, you know, one time. On well, music, for matter of fact, you should have been talking to M. E. Z. earlier about the music. You can't you can't. One thing you can't get nervous when you got people around you that can maybe you know progress and help you help your career. You got to take advantage of those opportunities. But you are gonna be on TV. So everybody in New York and, and around the world is going to get to see you drop those balls. So just one more time, give them your Instagram. All right, my Instagram is Breezy Tom. My Facebook is Tom Breezy. Add me. Adam, I want to see his, his Instagram at 10,000 before the night is over. 
or maybe before the week, because it ain't going to go on air. Y'all ain't going to see this till Thursday. But we definitely going to see that. I appreciate you. Keep it up. Thanks for having me. All right. And then, listen, like I said, we out here family on three, Anthony Mason Jr. You see what we're bringing you, man. This is our youth, and we got to continue to support our youth. If we don't do it, who else is going to do it? And, and we definitely love what you're doing here at Real Fans Real Talk. That's why we always going to come out and support you, whatever you're doing. Yeah, for sure. I want to thank everybody, man, for this out here. Thank John, Amizi, Power 105. My young boys is always come out and just buying into what we're selling, you know what I'm saying? And it's youth enrichment, knowledge, you know what I'm saying, progression. You know what I'm saying? Inspiration, motivation for everybody. Not even just the kids. It's a family thing. That's why it's called Family on Three. You know what I mean? I want everybody to stay positive. Take advantage of every opportunity that you see in front of you. You know, and the people, the network. You know what I'm saying? It's always going to be somebody that you can possibly use later in life that's going to help excel your plan. So, you know what I'm saying? Stay here for it and let's get it. Stay positive, man. Stay positive. Without positivity, ain't nothing going to excel. With too much negative, you're going to stay in one spot. So just stay positive, man. Family on three. And make sure y'all following Family on three on Instagram, at Family on three. Make y'all follow Young Mace on, on Instagram as well. Because uh, he's out here working. Anybody, like I said, anybody that's out here supporting our youth, y'all need to get behind him and support him as Real Fans Real Talk will continue to do. With that being said, we got to get back to the studio. We got a live show this Thursday, so make sure y'all keeping it locked. Verizon 44, Real Fans Real Talk. Hit us up on the web, realfansrealtalk.com as well, at Real Fan Talk on Twitter, on Instagram. Trip Young, Statman. We up out of here. Realfansrealtalk.com. Where Arthur Dom is tripped young and intern Tom. But a white and... All right, we are live here on Real Fans Real Talk. Mark the Statman Skevich. I have the goodies over here from uh, Chef Cubano. Uh, the cheesecakes, uh, little miniature cheesecakes. If I could get someone to zoom in on here. We have a whole bunch of different flavors here. You got the Fruity Pebbles, m and m Snickers, uh, you know... Uh, cocoa crisp and uh, all different types of flavors here and uh, this is just uh, a few examples of what he has to offer mother's day is around the corner so it might be a good idea to have some of that special cheesecake out there for mother's day chef cubano welcome to the program Welcome. And anytime somebody brings, you know, gifts of this nature to us on the set, you're always welcome to come back whenever you're ready and uh, bring more of those uh, tasty treats uh, because we definitely, like you said, uh, Statman said at the Ball for Peace, you were out there. So I think that we, we got our first little uh, taste of them then. And um, uh, Ladybug is like screaming for me to, to let the world know that she snuck hers into the basketball court and almost got us thrown out of the game because you weren't supposed to be eating on the court, but that's how good they are. You take a chance. Ladybug you always know? start problems. Yeah. Though, but Ladybug is in the building for the rumor mill a little bit later on in the program. But what made you get, you know, some people, you know, they cook and, you know, they just decide uh, to make it a business. We A lot of the Philly cheesesteak places started that way. Uh, you just brought them into work. And the next thing you know, you got one of the, the famous pizza, uh, excuse me, cheesesteak places out there. Um, Pat's cheesesteaks, that's how that got started. And what made you decide that you wanted to sell uh, the cheesecakes to the public? Well, I actually got assigned to this in school. I was in um, Star Creek Academy. Um, I was assigned cheesecakes at the dessert buffet. And um, I remember doing cheesecakes with my mom when I was little. So kind of brought her recipe and the recipe they gave me and mixed it up. And now it's four. And um, a lot of people liked it. Top chefs was like, hey, man, like, you can actually do something with this. So I actually stopped working at Pret. Save some paychecks and start my own business doing this, going around my neighborhood, giving some samples out. Then I took it serious when I got my when I got a phone because I didn't have a phone when I first started. I just was doing word to mouth in the streets and doing Facebook messages, meetups, and got noticed by some girl and she invited me to um, actually a balling for peace last year in January and on um, Baruch. Then from there on, just people have been hitting me up about coming to events with the case because they've been loving it. They were there Bowling for Peace last year. They are Bowling for Peace this year. Uh, and the Bowling for Peace, you're going to be there this Monday as well. Um, now, how do the folks, uh, how, where did you get the idea to be so creative? Like, you, you knew you could make a cheesecake, but where did you get the idea to do, like, the can different candies, uh, Snickers and M&Ms and everything else that you have? 
I'm a candy person, so I always like, and I'm a creative person, so I always like brought that to to my cakes. Like I always brought like. Basically, I didn't want to make it simple. Like, I don't really see people with like the crazy flavors. I always see like cherry, plain, and then that's it. Like a uh, Oreo, with, but like, the marble and stuff yeah. like that. But I don't really see Oreo, Hennessy, stuff like that. Fruity Pebbles, like nah, like that's my brand. Like you know, like nobody really had that till now. You know. Now, well, now I'm copying it. By the way, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's not easy to make a cheesecake. It's not definitely not easy to make a, a really good one like yours. That's for sure. What are you gonna say, Drew? How uh, how long does it take you to uh, to make? I guess a uh, a dozen. A dozen? Yeah. Probably like thirty minutes. Oh, because it's pretty quick. So, yeah. all right. but you have a, you know the 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 basic. Uh, form of the cheesecake like ready because i know you got to put it have it in the fridge for a while or something or how does that um i water bath it and then i put it in the freezer mm-hmm. i use up i put it in the fridge sometimes but i put it in the freezer it's like i like people like it like ice cream yeah so the cheesecake is like ice cream cake so i put it in the freezer but i put it in the fridge too all right that's i mean uh, you see what's going on over here we might have to just pause the show and yeah, i have the um, fork ready here sandwich. i think i'm just gonna yeah, eat it. I, I know the crew is looking forward to having some yeah. ladybug was looking to have some but you know you i'm know, just gonna go and pick it out and, and look and see yeah. the chef comes with his own spoons <laughs> for us so that might just have to go down because you know what no we're definitely gonna do this I because mean, he, he gave, the people at home spoon. that's watching right now you know live they need to know how good these things are really are so you know Stedman grab can, can we get one more spoon yeah, for, yeah. chef from you we're gonna try this right here you know on the air I'm gonna go with the Snickers and all right I'm gonna do you know I'm gonna let me let me, let me check these uh the cocoa pebbles here get a little nice little piece of that and you got on um, pop tart s'mores on the bottom that's 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 good stuff that's good stuff yeah, the bottom is that's good stuff it's crazy right, right? <laughs> you, uh, Chef Cubano, you officially have the Real Fans Real Talk sale of approval. Um, now, I, you know, I was already excited about going to uh, Ball for Peace uh, this coming week, and I'm actually more excited that the j- date got changed and got pushed up because I'm definitely going to be having some more of those on uh, Monday at the at the bowling alley. So y'all better make sure that y'all come through on Monday too and support uh, Haran uh, at, at Bowmore Lanes because. I mean, you got bowling, you got the celebs, and you got the, yo, these uh, cheesecakes are amazing right here. So you might want to come down and get you some. And uh, chef, can you tell everybody um, where if they want to order, you know, larger amounts, where they can get you at? Um, Instagram or call my cell phone. On uh, Instagram is um, Chef Cubano, C H E F C U B A N O. Or my cell phone number is six four six 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 eight six six nine five. I'm twenty four hours. 20, come on, man. You got to love that. Delivers 24 hours. To all four boroughs, yep. not Staten Island. Oh, no, no, no Staten Island? <laughs> no. Nah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I got the tolls. <laughs> Staten Island, they're out there. You know, they got to come meet you in Brooklyn. I, the toll increased yeah. the cost of everything. And I'm not trying to take the ferry over to Staten Island. Sorry, Staten Island. Y'all done missed out. But uh, maybe if you if you get a large enough order, you might just come out to Staten Island. Connecticut. Metro North. Oh, we yeah, right, so listen, you have, in Connecticut too. You do have all different sizes. You have the mini pies here. You have larger pies. You sell them in the jars, I know, usually at the events and stuff, so all different options. You can check out all the flavors, all the information on his Instagram, at Chef Cubano, and um, his phone number is listed on there as well. All the flavors are on there. Uh, thank you for coming on, uh, Chef. Uh, it, was, it was great. And the, the, w- one more question before we go, though. Do you ever kind of get discouraged? Because I know starting your own business is a little bit rough. Uh, do you ever get discouraged? You know, business slows down or anything like that, or yeah, I mean, that's life. You know, like doing this business like by myself, not really having a guidance, like having a, like a big mentor, a big brother. Like I'm just learning everything with the flow. You know, like sometimes I don't think before I say stuff, but you know, like I'm just learning. You know, sometimes my fans they give me. They give me a word of advice and I just go with it, you know? Like, they're not really putting me down. They're putting me up. They want to see me do good. Mm. And that's what's good. Like, if I didn't have really a good fan base, then maybe I'd be, like, a negative person. But I got a lot of good fans. I appreciate that. I do have some advice for you maybe after the show, but uh, we'll we'll probably get into that. uh, Is the advice to bring more uh, cheesecake to Real Fans Real Talk? Well, that's the (laughs) bill for the advice. (laughs) But uh, but, uh, we'll we'll get into that a little later. And, you know, just remember... uh, 
Coca-Cola sold six bottles in their first year. That is six bottles of Coca-Cola in their first year. UPS started with three bicycles. So, you know, it doesn't... It, and real fans, real talk, I always say it takes years to become an overnight sensation. We're not, you know, prime time on the major networks, but we're out there. We're getting a lot of guests. We keep growing as we go, and you just got to keep going with it. So we'll definitely wish you the best. You definitely got a good product here, and uh, mm -hmm. it does get the real fans, real talk seal of approval. I know Ladybug is itching to eat some herself, and we're going to have her on <laughs> as soon as we, we're going to play... Uh, Real fans, real talk, got a little bit political out there on the family on three. Uh, he, uh, Trip Young interviewed one a senator out there as well. So we're going to play that video for a couple of minutes. And then when we come back, we're going to have the one and only Ladybug joining us on the program. Let's do it. But make sure y'all following us on the web too, realfansrealtalk.com. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Well, Arthur Domus, Trip Young, and Intern Tom. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I'll get all my facts from my bro, Mark. Lestat. What's going on? It's Trip Young. We out here. This is the last stop of the day. We out here supporting Anthony Mason Jr. with the whole Family on Three charity organization. And I'm here with Senator Leroy Comrie out of Queens. He, he covers uh, Laurelton, Briarwood, and a couple of other neighborhoods out here in Queens. So, first question is what brings you out to support our Family on Three? Well, you know, I believe in what uh, Anthony Mason Jr. is trying to do to give back to the community and the programs and utilizing sports and um, utilizing the power of positivity uh, to make children realize that they have other options and that they can, uh, you know, everything that uh, Anthony and his crew are doing, the family on three, has been something that's positive for the community. So I'm always trying to help young people that are looking to, you know, give back to their own community and to do things that can change children's lives. Okay. All right. And then are there are there other programs that the, the senator's office does that um, yeah. also? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we work with a lot of different youth groups and, and different community groups as they try to organize programs. And we try to help them with getting the space, getting the facility, uh, working with them, with um, doing everything they can to advertise and promote the issue and doing everything we can to ensure that people can uh, partner up with them as well helping them find the links and the resources to make these things happen. Now, we do, I, I don't want to talk too much politics, but we do okay. have a, a presidential uh, race well, go, I'm, go, I'm going on right delegate. now. I'm a, I'm a realist, you know. I mean, I, I'm a Hillary delegate. Um, you know, all of the other candidates are making promises that they have no track record of ever getting anything done. The only person that has a true track record that has really made the attempt that has tried to do things is Hillary Clinton. Now, has she been perfect? No, but she's tried. She's made the honest effort. She knows what to say. She knows how to reach people. I think that she's the kind of person that we need in office is somebody that, that can actually do things. She has respect of the le legislators, which is why they are scared of uh, bringing her in, because she knows that she can talk the talk and speak the logo and, and do the things necessary to truly convince people. So I'm with Hillary, and I hope that people come out to vote. Um, in the election in New York, and I, but even more so, I hope that they come out in September and November to vote for the president. All right, now, since, since, you, since you're supporting Hillary right now, if she right. does get it, when the next term comes around, is that something that you might be looking into, into doing, running for oh, president? No, no, I'm not interested in running for president. I'm happy being a state senator. You know, running on a national level takes a lot of different, um, uh, a lot of different focus than, you know, what... Uh, and there's a lot of other young people and other people that are really ready to be president that I'd be happy to support. So we have other young minorities that are, are moving through the country that are ready. Then you know, we just have to work as a community to help get them to that level where they can be considered a serious presidential candidate. What I'm afraid of is because of Obama, they, there's a, you know, this whole Trump thing, make America white again, you know, is, is really about taking back the government from and making sure that we never have another minority president again. But we have plenty of qualified people in and around the country that can be national leaders. And we just need to identify, support them, and give them the money and the resources so that they can get out there. Okay. Now, we got the NBA playoffs starting today and Family on 3, since it does focus on basketball. You, you are a, a native uh, New Yorker. Yes. So you've been following the Knicks for a long time. I have. Now, I have to ask you a question. 
what can be done all right we are back live here on real fans real talk the set just got a little bit livelier here with ladybug on the program <laughs> of course chef cubano the cheesecake extraordinaire is here and of course trip young i'm mark the stat man uh, we had to cut the center a little bit short there i know so social media goes crazy if they don't see their ladybug. So mm -hmm. and, and Real Fans Real Talk does not make any official political endorsements. We do appreciate the center coming out for the kids at the at the charity event. Unless uh, Chef Cubano decides to run, I'm in full support of you and the uh, cheesecake. I said stat man for president, but that's a little bit uh, so, you know, a little bit biased of an opinion. But Ladybug, how are you doing? Good, happy Cinco de Mayo to everybody that's celebrating. Mm -hmm. um, you know, me personally, I am a cheesecake fiend. And everybody that knows me knows I love cheesecake. And Chef Cubano definitely won me over. And yes, I did get caught sneaking a cheesecake <laughs> into the bowl. <laughs> But you see, you didn't have to say that. I, I I took it with pride. But you always get caught with these kind of things. You always get us in so trouble good. with security. Yeah. No, and I always have to was. set things straight, yeah. no matter where we stuff, are. I like keep it on the bottom. I keep it under that thing. I was just like eating in front of everybody. That's how good it is. I'm almost done. Yeah, so it's that good. And you know, I come harass him. He's like, dang, you here again? Like, yeah. And I bring people, so don't get me wrong. I support him wholeheartedly ladybug support chef cubano i endorse it yes ladybug says so do, do you want us to anyway, make an instagram video and, since you're doing endorsements do you I endorse will. rocco's pizza or no, like i do or? because i had like a few slices so thank you rocco's for the pizza too i was eating well today and you know it's not done because you know we still celebrating so it's all right but let me get into my rumor mill that everybody always asks for so i'm gonna start off with this whole you know we're quote unquote political i'll just say it like that basically adrian brona goes on radio and says he's voting for trump he's going he's backing up trump and he said he doesn't care if you know mexicans and and he he said it just like that he said it not me he said it mexicans already hate him so he's just gonna go ahead and vote for trump because they hate him anyway, so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't help, you know, it doesn't help or harm anyone if he votes for Trump or not. So um, that's that's where he stands. But basically, he says it, you know, on one of the most popular radio sh shows out right now, and one of the hosts is definitely against Trump. So that whole interview was didn't. First of all, shout out to because he said that was on on the on, Breakfast Club. Yes, yeah. on the Breakfast Club. Shout out Club, to yeah. uh, M Easy who was on on uh, with us uh, a mm -hmm. couple of weeks ago. Also at the Family on Three event, um, was one of the producers on on the Breakfast Club. Is that, you know, it, it doesn't surprise me coming from Adrian Brona. I just feel like on today of all days, we you know, this is coming up, and we're talking about this on Cinco de Mayo. You know, we're supposed he, to be here. He, he did with, it a couple of days ago. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, we're talking about it today, though. Yeah. But, but, yeah, it just so happened. And then, you know, he also goes on to say he regrets not taking that Rock Nation contracts and and you know and was a lot 40, that. yeah 40 you million. Know, he still says it wasn't enough but he still regrets not taking it because what are you doing now? well after he got it's knocked okay. out a couple of times i think whatever he can get he should be taking and he's not down with the money team anymore which i am down with the money team still <laughs> you know he might be hoping to fight Mayweather too. Well, so, he is. He, did, mean, he called Mayweather out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, is, he, is, he is, which is a big payday for him, but he's also, yeah. I think, trying to be the bad guy by endorsing Trump on, you know, Power 105 ones, the Breakfast Club. He, he said that. Um, he's endorsing him because he's going to lower my taxes because he makes yeah, money. Like, and then they said to him, the Mexicans are going to hate you. They're like, they're already hating me. I don't care. <laughs> you know, I just want my taxes lowered. And, you know, he... You know, Trump is a hated person now by a lot of people, so he wants to be the bad guy. It worked for Mayweather being the bad guy, but, you know, they told him he probably can't vote anyway because <laughs> he, he has felonies. <laughs> well, and that's the reality. Mayweather doesn't lose, though, so that's the difference. Mayweather could be the bad guy when you don't lose. When you be the bad guy and you get knocked out badly, that <laughs> you just, just try whatever work. he can to make money. That's what it really yeah. comes that, down to. AB, oh, about billions, as, as he calls himself, d doesn't have any billions, but, you know. About since, it. B before yeah. you move on to the next topic, though, Ladybug, since we're on the subject, we had uh, Eric from Brooklyn wrote in, May if Mayweather does come back out of retirement, who would you want to see him fight and which opponent would you think would generate the most money? Um, now, a Pacquiao rematch would probably be number one. 
Oh, and and, and for promotional, if it's a UFC fighter like Conor McGregor, that you know he kind of his stock kind of went down because he lost the UFC fight. Yeah. Uh, the Adrian Broner one, if they hype it up enough, maybe. Triple G. But triple G is more. Who I, think who I would most... want to see though, I think would probably be a Triple G or a D- Danny Garcia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who I want to see maybe the most would be Danny, Danny Garcia. Since that never happened, but. I, I don't want to see him fight anybody that's not undefeated. For me personally, so it would have to be Danny Garcia. For me, I know he's not going to fight Triple G, which is probably the fight that would actually mm-hmm. generate the most pay per view dollars, but I know he's not going to fight him. I think to the Pacquiao chase, won't rematch chase, uh, still generate to chase more. 50. Those, so that's more of a household name for everybody. So Yeah, but I don't think he's going to fight Pacquiao again. I mean, he doesn't have a reason to. And Pacquiao got them lost. I don't want to see him fight Pacquiao. It's either going to be. <laughs> I mean, I don't, but I'm just saying, as far as dollars. <laughs> People yeah. like the Manny Pacquiao Mayweather fight, fight brought Durman. everyone out of the woodwork, and then the excuse with the shoulder is like, "Oh, that's yeah. why he lost." And everyone wants it, and you know that I think would still generate the most. That's why it pays to be down with the money team, step man. That's true. But anyway, <laughs> enough of that. I don't think he's coming out of retirement because May is already passing, and you know he likes to fight in May. His name is Mayweather. I think he might actually be done for real this time. Mm -hmm. But move along with your (laughs) other topics, Ladybug. I just want to shout out Eric for writing in the fan mail question. Yes, definitely. So, you know, a few weeks ago, I was talking about how um, Oscar De La Hoya, you know, he played golf with Trump and, you know, with the whole uh, candidate and, and, and all that happened. And now we go and we hear that Oscar De La Hoya is really not, supporting Trump at all. He's saying he's a cheater in golf. I'm not interested in voting for anybody that cheats in golf. And <laughs> Sounds like a sore loser, but... And, and, and no, well, if he cheated, but, he cheated. He no, but, but you know true, how I feel like Trump cheats people, arrogantly. Yeah. Like he'll do something that he knows he's not supposed to do or something that you're not supposed to do in golf. But basically he owns the property. So who is going to tell him to really like not do it when you pay everybody now, there? Can you, can you so trust a man cheated? as yeah. you as the president if he cheats at golf i tell people to vote just vote <laughs> do what you're supposed to do let's do it the right way because everything else is technically not working so let's do it the right way and and that's just that i'm oh, not going to talk no more on that because trip has his uh issues with oscar de la hoya we're not going to get into that I, is this not the I, last time i talked about him you had your own reasonings and we're not going to get into that I, listen so, it's not my <laughs> fault if he cross dresses i didn't make that man do that all right. All right. How did you go? He How said. He said before that Trump was only running to help his friend Hillary win. Exactly. But now but, it's like. I mean, well, that's it. Could still be a reality since yeah. they're going. It looks like they're going to go head to head. Yeah. Uh, against each As, other. As uh, my friend Dave Chappelle would say on the Chappelle Show, "Cocaine is a hell of a drug." <laughs> Damn, oh yeah. Get it together, I'm brother. I'm done. I'm done. But anyway, moving on. Going into the money team and, and Floyd Mayweather, basically. I don't, you know, usually when I talk about Mayweather, I go into my whole Mayweather versus the world segment. And it's not really that bad. It's just, you know, Mayweather, since he is retired, he has all this free time. And the media, the paparazzi caught him on a two-on-two with Jim Jones. And, you know, Jim mm-hmm. Jones doesn't like to stop. So, basically... And, and Mayweather is, quote, unquote, the bad guy. So uh, cameras caught them two on a two-on-two in a private court. And basically, they were just smack talking. And, and Mayweather smack talk is real. But Jim Jones is not going to let anybody talk to him any old way. So that, I, I feel like, you know, it didn't go to blows. It didn't fight. You know, it wasn't none of that. But the smack talk was real that they need to finish up on the court. Like, no. I did see on Instagram uh, Jim Jones posting that video. He did say the one person he would allow to talk smack to him is Mayweather. Well, I'm saying so, because, but I'm saying. I guess he's you know, down with the money team. Yeah, he's down with the money <laughs> team. Shout out to Jim Jones, too. That's another, you know, another friend of the, of the program. And if you guys haven't already seen the interview uh, Statman did with Jim Jones, make sure y'all hit the YouTube channel up and uh, check that out, youtube.com forward slash for the fans productions. But shout out to Jimmy. Fans, real talk.com website as well so yeah so that was definitely fun to watch you know you like to see quote unquote celebrities and things like that they definitely you know try and keep it personal but it was it was awesome to see two celebrities that that's not even their fields but you know everybody likes to play ball here and there likes to talk smack so that's awesome 
Um, you know, in another news, I want to congratulate um, Justin Verlander. He got engaged to uh, Kate Upton. Another and, one uh, bites the dust. <sighs> I'm talking about Kate Upton. I'm not talking about Justin Upton. I'm saying that's some, you know. She's I'm off not the for market. Me. That's She's off the market. Yeah, I'm saying. You're not for me a, personally because, yeah. you know, I, Serena, baby, wifey, for mm -hmm. lifey. That's why, that's why I did If you're watching the, this, you know, I, you know, it's all for you, girl. My female all fans, this is I for got y'all. You. you see how all this you is for how? you. He wasn't low for that. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> she was uh, she was rocking her engagement ring at the Met Gala this year. And, you know, they've been together for over three years now. So, you know, it's awesome to see two people ready to take that next step. Congratulations. So definitely congratulations to them. And, um, you know, I had to talk about this before we... Um, before I end off my segment, I was there, so I had to talk about it. Had to talk about Statman's loss in the 2K challenge <laughs> against, our, against our real fans, real talk blogger, Jay Bravo. Shout out to Jay. It's all love. You no, know, and it's crazy because I, I was the there. Mix. He had the Bulls. He was home. And it was on the I, Xbox. I, I beat him it was on, on the, the Xbox. One. I beat him on the Xbox. We used to play on PS4. But the, the Bulls do anymore. suck. They don't even have like no one or anybody excuses. else. <laughs> yeah. But once I picked a different team besides the Knicks, I did redeem he myself. He did redeem himself. I was but there. I was when, in attendance. But the, when the bet and the pressure was on, you kind of folded. And then you tried to quit before like before too. we could post the video on Instagram. You tried to quit and whatnot. What, what was going on with you on that day? I, I, I don't know. I don't why know. Would you quit like, game why would you quit like is. that before we could actually post the final score for the fans at home to see? After they it's already okay. knew the challenge they was made. They didn't need to know. Because, you know, recording when you're down by, by like play. seven, you start chucking threes in the last couple minutes. Then the final get score, I lost by 13 or something. Step, man, one thing I will say, you got a lot of excuses. I know. It's fine. It's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. You'll get them next time. Moving along, we got to Wrap things okay. up here. Shout out to Jay Bravo, man. Shout out to Jay Bravo. It's, it's time for the final thought uh, of the program, uh, Ladybug. Um, I just want to say I can't wait to get into them cheesecakes because Chef Cuban already know I'm too far away to always run to him. So yeah, this, you were over there in clutch. the control room up against I the window. Yeah, I was screaming. Yeah, banging on the glass. <sighs> That's what I'm doing. So on definitely the window, I can't like... wait. But it's no, always... make sure you don't eat all that. Save some food. Yes, I seen them like open it and then my heart dropped. Like, you really gonna do this? Like, it was like I was in the cage and they couldn't let me out. But my final thought is definitely big shout out Chef Cubano, everybody else. Shout out to recent Mercedes as always. So. Yep. All right. Well, this has been a great day for me. It's single de Mayo. We was up here. I was I was pre gaming with the with the pre game earlier t today. You know, so we're gonna have fun uh, tonight enjoying these cheesecakes, Chef Cubano. We appreciate you coming on to the program, Good and night. I'm gonna just say early Happy Mother's Day since we're not gonna be back until next yes. Thursday. Early Happy Mother's Day to all of the the mothers, the grandmothers out there. Uh, shout out to uh, <laughs> to um, uh, Mom and Pops. Skevich, because yes. they had us over earlier they, and they was pre-gaming with us hard. They yes. go they go in. So shout out <laughs> to them and shout out to uh, to Kyla too. She got some stuff coming. We're going to talk about that a little bit down the road, but uh, shout out to her. Definitely happy Mother's Day in advance. Of course, mom is always watching, so uh, definitely got to shout her out. And uh, of course, thanks Chef Cubano. Mother's Day's around the corner. Hit them up for some cheesecakes for your mom. ASAP. Definitely a good idea. And shout out to too. Rocco's Pizza once again, yes. uh, pizza eating contest. Uh, more information, uh, check them out, Rocco's Pizza on fifth.com. And for Chef Cubano, Ladybug, and Trip Young, I'm Mark the Statman Skevich. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Real Fans Real Talk, and we'll see you next week, everyone. Good night. At Real Fan Talk, make sure y'all following. Facts, what up, what up? Real fans, real talk.com. Where Arthur Domus trip young and intern time for the white and black fans. Asia to Manhattan. I'll get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats, man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, <laughs> gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Real fans, real talk.com. Got it. Uh -huh. They got the hottest bloggers. Did Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the great. Go check out the archives, even tell a neighbor, tell him Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only...